New Year, new army. I know it's February, don't rush me. I'm putting together a Dark Eldar army, 2,000 points over the course of the year, and I'm gonna be doing it with none other than Scott, the miniature maniac who's doing the exact same thing. We're gonna have a point system in place for building, converting, painting, modeling, and gaming, and we're gonna see who wins overall. And uh, it's gonna be me. Now, it's been a while since I started a brand new 40K project, and I'm really excited because I have put together a lot of minis in the meantime, and I've learned a lot of things. And so each of my armies is a little bit different. My Black Templar, my Necrons, my Gene Stealer cults, and I want the Dark Eldar to be different, really different. And so I bought some stuff, a lot of stuff. All of this stuff, I want my Dark Eldar to be super special. I want them to be everything I envision in my head. And so I gotta try out a lot of new things. But Scott has a leg up on me because he actually has a fair few Dark Eldar already built and I don't even have a color scheme picked out. Pretty sure it's gonna be pink, but we'll see. Cracking open a new army is always exciting. Getting a feel for a new army. And I've never really dived into the elves. I've never cared for the normal Eldar, but there is something special and spiky about the Dark Elves. My goal is to get a squad of troopers done to solidify my color scheme, and I just can't get enough of that new plastic smell. <sighs> and so it begins. Cabalites are the normal rank and file of the Drukhari, and so this is where I want to begin. If anyone wants to start a new army, I would always recommend buying one box of the basic troops and finishing those. You might find out you don't even like doing it, and that could save you and your wallet a lot of pain. Now, a little snag in the building, the two halves of the Dark Elder bodies have an unsightly seam right down the middle. These models are old, but have held up well. I have an idea of how to fix this flaw. I put some tape underneath each shoulder and then gently placed a drop of super glue and then poured on baking soda. This makes a super hard resin-like material and I can reshape that corner into a nice sharp point with some sanding twigs. I finished gluing my bad boys and girls together and got them onto some paint handles and I love how imposing and extra they are, like glam rock ninjas. 10 Cabalites deep, this project is starting to feel real. And I gotta pick some colors, and I actually already have some Dark Eldar models finished. Although not really. These are Hellions, and the reason I have them is because they were 20 bucks on eBay and I couldn't resist. So they're not really part of this army, but I think I got somewhere close with the color scheme. Pink and teal is really, really nice, but they're a little pastel-y. They're a little desaturated, and I wanna pump up those values quite a bit. And the bases I am very happy with, pretty much because they're my Black Templar bases. Actually, they're exactly my Black Templar bases, just with some grass tufts on there. So I got to do a little something to differentiate this army, and I'm going to cast custom resin bases for each Drukhari. I love the look of no base rim. And I'm just going to, I'm going to do it for the entire army. I don't know if it's really been done before. The base rim is so ubiquitous. Every model has to have a base rim. In theory, you pick up all your models only by the base rim, never actually touching the model itself. I, I reach in there like a big bowl of popcorn. I don't really care. And that's why I'm gonna omit the base rim. And I think it's just gonna look incredible. But now to find the perfect pink. I don't paint much pink, but I have amassed quite a collection of color pink paints. I'm thinking classic pig pink, some magenta and mixing in some of this fluorescent pink and the camera doesn't do it justice. This color is upsettingly pink. Then teal for a secondary color, plus black and white. I started messing around on my palette, seeing how these colors interact with one another. I would rather not add tons of colors. I wanna see how much I can get away with just using these. And I found a picture online and drew on top of it to try out some color combinations. I primed my first Deldar, starting with black, a suitable color for my dark Eldar. And then I mixed in some of my blue and black into my pink to make a dark pink for a base coat. I sprayed this on from underneath and took careful notes of exactly what I'm doing. I want this army to actually be consistent, unlike any of my other armies. I sprayed proper pink from above and they might look a little obnoxious, but if I hold up something that's actually white next to them, you can see they're still pretty dark. Now for something I've always wanted to take advantage of. If I turn the PSI almost all the way down on my airbrush, it'll spit out paint. I want to create a messy texture over my Drakari armor, so to start this process, I splattered light pink over everything. Then I tore myself a little piece of foam to sponge on some black mixed with my turquoise color. I went pretty hard with the sponging, but a lot of it will get covered up later. I'm layering on a messy foundation. And speaking of foundations, all the metal will be bronze, so I base coated these parts with a dark earth color. I'm going true metallic metal for this army, and even the best metallics can't one coat cover bright pink, so a base coat is essential. I put gold paint on top of this and picked out any of the cloth with my teal color. 
I mixed up a dark reddish magenta to put over their under armor, which I probably should have done first before all the other details, but in the end, I had some silly looking boys. They don't look at all finished, but it's all part of the plan. I sprayed everyone with the gloss varnish in preparation for a wash. I want the recesses dark, but I don't want all the models themselves to get too dark, so a gloss will help the wash wash. I put Agrax Earthshade over my first elf, which stained beautifully, but it also made the pink armor look a little more salmon-y red. Not quite what I'm after, so for the rest I used Nuln Oil. While they were still wet, I used a clean brush to wick away the wash anywhere it was pooling too hard, but this one step has super changed the overall look of these fellas. My Cabalites definitely needed a wash, and honestly, they're looking pretty good. I should really stop now. Like, if I wanted to get 50 Cabalites done this month, I would stop here. But I've never been one for making things easy on myself, and I love a good highlight, so it's time to pour some serious time into my most basic troop choice. On my previous Eldar, I did a slap chop over a Zenithal, which gave me some nice values. My new Eldar are pretty much flat. I need to make the new ones look like the old ones, and I think to make these models look their best. Every metal edge highlights will do the trick. I carefully edged every highlight, working slow with a nice sharp brush. These guys are all about their segmented armor, so I want that to pop. And you know what else is popping? Your models and Cobalt Keep display cases. Not only has Cobalt Keep got the best quality and quantity of miniature wargaming bases, but their display cases are the sharpest way to display and transport your collections. Their hero display case can hold one epic miniature with a built-in metal plate on the bottom so you don't have to worry about magnet polarity. Your models will be held safe and secure, and these cases are stackable so you can build a wall of pride, showcasing your collection. Cobalt Keep's army display cases are the next step up, able to hold an entire squad or warband of tabletop miniatures. The floor of these cases is made of metal so your models will be held securely no matter where they are in the case. And from experience, I can say, rocking up to your local game store with your models in one of these will get some attention. It's a really slick case and helps you show off your minis to your friends while keeping their filthy Cheeto fingers off your perfect models. The high quality polycarbonate shell securely clips into place and your minis are ready to be transported or displayed in style. And as if the army case wasn't big enough, Cobalt Keep has you covered. Their cavalry cases are monstrous, big enough to hold actual monsters, or any other big impressive centerpiece model in your collection. If you want to pick up some of these magnetic display cases and show off your minis in style, you can shop with the code EOB10 to get 10% off your order of Cobalt Keep cases. Once the armor was finished, I took a brown contrast paint and made some shadows on my metal. Then I mixed silver into my gold to highlight, putting this opposite of where I put the shadows. The gold and pink are both very warm colors, so switching over to my green-blue is a lot of fun. It really pops. I'm gonna use this combo all over my army. I think on my next 10 warriors, I might invert it. Teal armor and pink loincloths. I use these same colors on their eyes, and my boys are done. I have five Cabalite warriors all finished and ready to go, ready for bases, but I have no bases. I need to build them, but I have to build them and not use them. These are sticker back magnet sheets, and eventually this will be what's underneath each of my elves. I'm going to use these as the base to build up from, since I'm not using the bases they came with. And for the ground, I bought a few different sizes of slate rock. Not something I would usually use for bases, but for casting, these will be perfect. I stuck them down with Milliput and super glue and started layering them up, building them taller and taller using my sculpting tools to try and hide where the rock ends and the putty begins. Once I had my now very heavy bases, I added some decorations, a few skulls here and there, and a sprinkling of pulverized slate rock. The slate is nice and flat, giving me plenty of room for Eldar feet while being exotic looking. I've got eight bases all built and ready to go. I'm taking a little bit of a calculated risk. The Dark Eldar are supposed to stay on, on 25mm bases, but I have built 28.5mm bases. The regular Eldar used to stay on, on 25s, and recently they got a range update that increased it from 25 to 285 so I'm hoping I'm future-proofing my army a little bit. And it took about an hour to build each of these bases, which is fine, but I definitely wouldn't like to do it a hundred times. And I'm thinking, I won't have to. I'm gonna cast them. This stuff is Smooth On Mold Star 16 Rubber. I'm gonna be pouring this over my bases, but I need to make a little box. And I want that box as small as possible. This rubber is expensive, and I'm hoping I can make all the molds for my entire army out of these bottles. I put packing tape over my foam core and stuck down my bases. It's kind of perfect that they're peeling stick. Now that I have them down, I think I can lose a lot more area, so I cut down my foam core even smaller and I put it all together with hot glue, using a lot of hot glue and letting it squish. That squish is gonna be what gives me my watertight seal. Now for the tricky part, how much rubber will it take? I poured some sand into my mold until it was perfectly at my fill line and then poured that into a cup. And thank goodness I did this because I discovered I needed a much bigger cup. I used sand because it's dry, but now I need to know how heavy this amount of liquid will be. So I made a mark and filled it back up with water. It's bang on 10 ounces. 
I've got it all figured out, now it is go time. I'm very dubious about its 30 minute cure time. That seems really fast. Although its working time is supposedly six minutes, so I'm gonna have to be really fast. With speed in mind, I need a good way to stir up this batch. So I took some popsicle sticks I had lying around and glued them to a match. I can shove this into my drill and it'll stir for me. Then I mixed the two halves in the pots and got ready for the pour. Five ounces and five ounces, give or take a little bit for the containers, and then the race was on. Six minutes is not a lot of time to get this all done. I dumped it all together and started my clock. I set my drill on ludicrous speed and whipped it into shape. Two minutes of stirring and then four minutes of pouring, going as slow as I could to try not to trap any bubbles. But really, it's just hope at this point that it all worked out. All right, it is sitting pretty. The only thing that could have gone wrong is not mixing it well enough, but I got the whole operation done in exactly six minutes as the box demanded. So I guess I got 30 minutes and we'll see what happened. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Actually, it's been closer to an hour and oh, it feels, it feels really good. <sighs> but do I trust it? Like this is like a $20 mold. <sighs> I gotta see. I tore apart my box like a kid tears open their presents on Christmas morning. It's either success or failure, but everything was looking all right. It looks like it worked flawlessly. Ah, oh, that really was quick and it really does feel good, but there's only one way to know if it works and that is to cast in it. I bought Illumilite 10 minute casting resin and this is white. And I hear some of you say, Jay, no base rims, white resin, it's gonna chip and look terrible in a couple of games, and I agree, but that's why I bought Illumilite Black Ink. So my bases are gonna come out of the mold black, which is the color I want them to be on my final models. It should work perfectly, but I gotta figure out how much I need. These models are tiny, tiny, so I can't really do the sand trick, so YOLO. I poured my two halves, eyeballing the fill line, and I put in a drop of the black, and it looks like that single drop was probably overkill. I started my timer and poured the two halves together. I went so fast that I spilled a lot, and I decided to move my brand new painted models away from the splash zone, remembering something I saw in a video once. I stirred for one minute, then poured for one minute, and it is quick. The box says a two to three minute work time, but it feels a lot closer to two than three. I let the resin sit for about 10 minutes, and then it was time. Number one, I would just like to say that my eyes are nearly perfect. I mixed up exactly the right amount of resin and I am so nervous. Are they gonna be perfect? Are they gonna be full of bubbles? There's only one way to find out. I gently pulled my bases from the molds and they looked pretty good. Unfortunately though, there were some bubbles trapped in the pointiest parts of the bases. That's good though. It means that the problem is in the resin, not the mold. And I already have some ideas of what I can do to make it better. I sharpied marks to remind myself where the dangerous spots are and I put the mold on an angle so hopefully gravity will help me out. For my second batch, I poured just a little splash into each hole and used a disposable brush to push the resin into the tips, then filled it up the rest of the way. This worked out way better. They're about 95% perfect. And if anyone has any more ideas, please let me know. The bubbles aren't the end of the world though. I just cut off the bubble parts and chalked it up to the natural irregularity of the stone. In no time, I had a couple dozen bases all done. I sanded down the bottoms nice and flat and stuck on my magnet stickers and gave them all a black prime. I base coated my bases a dark gray mixed with a little bit of black and brown, doing a zenithal leaving plenty of the black primer still visible, and then came the dry brushing. A little bit of gray on the edges and then a second dusting of light gray mixed with white and they look so good. You can't even tell they're homemade, just some rocks and goo from earlier today. I put some phthalo green ink into my airbrush and dusted this over the bases to tint them and then I watered down some red brown. I put this over the sand and it has a lot of warmth that'll bring in a little bit of the pink from my minis onto the base. I used whatever colors were already on my palette to pick out the skulls, highlighted them all the way to white and then my super custom bases were finished in one day. Oh, I am in love with these bases and they already have the magnets in them. I have a pipe dream of getting all of my models on magnet bases, but I have well over 2000 painted miniatures. It's just not gonna happen, but these 10 Cabalites are all Dunyan rings. Once they're on the bases, they will never come back to the painting desk, only gaming. And speaking of these Cabalites, I'm sure some of you are wondering, why pink? <laughs> well, one of the reasons is I don't paint any of my armies pink, so it's a fun new challenge. But also, these are the dark Eldar, and they like to be scary and dark. And so pink's not a very scary color, but it is to the Eldar, because the thing the Eldar fear the most is Slanesh. All Eldar souls are doomed to Slanesh. 
But the Dark Eldar have found a workaround. As long as they never, ever die, they will never be given to Slaanesh. And so they kind of wear pink in their armor just to tease the Dark God. They wear its colors, but they will never die and become one of Slaanesh's cultists. I really, really like that little bit of world building, and I gotta get these guys on some bases. Another reason I wanted to cast bases is because you can't pin minis into rock. But now that I've made resin bases that I can drill into, I'm still too lazy to pin my minis. I'm using super thick super glue, and if they ever snap off, maybe then I'll think about drill bits and paper clips. And with my boys stuck down, the last little cherry on top, some grass tufts. Wacky tufts. I've always loved these, but they've never been right for any of my armies. Until now. I'm not letting anything stop me on this army. YOLO. Oh, my little cabalites are all done! It's really important when starting a new army to like the basic trooper, and I really like the cabalites. They're like regular Eldar, but actually cool. And I actually casted up enough bases for my second squad of cabalites, which I might start working on them today, because I'm feeling real juiced about my dark Eldar. And speaking of this army and this challenge overall, Scott and I are borrowing from the Games Workshop Escalation League rules so that we can both build up points to see who wins overall once we have our completed armies, but we're changing it a little bit, because we're both doing the same army, Dark Eldar. If we just used those points, it would pretty much just be a tie. Our scoring sheet starts out pretty simple. Buying a unit is a point. Putting that unit together is two points. Three points for painting a small squad. Five points for painting a large squad. Five points a vehicle. Five points a character. Three points for playing a game. But after that comes the juice. Interesting conversion, three points per model. Cool freehanding, three points per model. Interesting basing, three points a model. With these Cabalites painted, that brings me up to seven points. But with the eight custom bases I made, that brings me up to 31 points. And that's why I'm so excited for this project. Because it's not really even about finishing an army. It's about who can go above and beyond. It's about who can go harder. And I'm pretty hard right now. If you guys have any ideas what I could do to take this army above and beyond, please leave it in the comments below. Subscribe or die, but most importantly, don't forget to!